Hi, this is Dan Starr. This is a video. It may run a little bit longer than the five minutes, but hey, you should be able to give it five minutes. The, the lessons I teach, the workshops I teach on chords and chord progressions are each five hours, not five minutes long. Sometimes they run over too. Anyhow, I wanted to start out with something that I included in last month's newsletter, the advantages of knowing chords and chord progressions. Because if there's nothing in it for you, I don't believe you should be studying it. So there you go. You'd want to find out why you should bother before you put any time and effort into it. So the first three I want to cover as a, a group. Improved ability to read music of all sorts. Improved ability to memorize music of all sorts. And improved understanding and appreciation of music of all sorts. Now, obviously I need uh, all sorts of music to demonstrate this, right? Yes, and I have that. It's basically two kinds of music. Popular music and classical music. And, uh, th but there's a lot of different written musics, so we're going to cover some varieties of those. Now, the basic idea here is if you know chords, you don't have to process everything that there is in each song. You can if you want to, but you're a fool if you do. For example, let me take some classical music to start with. This is a book by Chopin. This is Prelude in B minor. Now I see these, this information here as being chord based, which of course is typical of Chopin. Um, he was a genius with chords, by the way, which leads me to the explanation of why you can better appreciate him by understanding what he was doing with his chords. You can see that, I hope. The other thing has to do with the ability to read and memorize. And that is the thing the psychologists like to call chunking. So if you can take three or four or five notes and chunk them into one symbol, you can process one symbol because it has to be those three or four or five notes. It can't be anything else. It's just what is the person working with it doing. That's why this works. So here's Chopin. Here are some arrangements. Modern music. You can see it has three staves. Most people know that uh, Right here, this is the piano part within this thing curved doodad called a brace. I hope you can see that. And the top line is for vocal and guitar. Okay, so that's what that's about. And finally, we have a real honest to God fake book here. Now, here you can see all there is is the melody line, the lyrics, and the chords. You'd have to know the chords in order to do anything that would harmonize that melody line. Of course, you could just play it as a right-handed pianist, but most people don't want to do that. So they'd have to know some chords to do that. The beauty of it is, there's over 100 songs in this short little folio, more so than in this huge folio, and also for less money. Because there's not as much information. You can put two songs on two pages. So that, that, that's a big time and money saver for you. Now, the other thing has to do with composition. Um, let's say you're playing a B-flat chord. Well, you know right off the bat that those three notes are going to work. You have a little creativity to put them in some sort of pattern, and it helps to know a few other notes, but at least you know three. And if you're playing a B-flat 7, So the, now you've got four notes. So anyways, that's the beginning of composition and improvisation, which is really nothing more than composition on the fly. Uh, finally, the automatic mechanisms on a keyboard. Now a keyboard is not a poor man's piano. It could serve as such, but it's not a really very good piano in many cases. If you just want a piano, your best bet is to save up your dough and buy a really good one. But since there's not a lot of dough out there, people get a keyboards, and it's kind of a damn shame that they don't learn to use them. After all, they paid for all this stuff. But what's necessary, for example, Lazy River. Um, I've already called up, uh, let's see, Piano Bar Blues is, would be a good one. So I'm going to turn this on and hit the first chord. <laughs> And I can play a melody. But 
But if you don't know chords, you can't do stuff like that. So accordion is very valuable. Okay, so that's some of the things I cover in the basic uh, workshop on chords. And now uh, you know that. There'll be another video coming along. I figured that I, since I have two chord workshops, a basic and advanced, I should have a video for each. So I'll teach you something else in the more advanced video. Thanks!